Hey everybody, Troy here. Welcome to the fifth video in our PowerShell Fundamental Series. This video is titled Working with Aliases. And uh, we're now moving into the world where we're trying to make PowerShell easier and more intuitive to work with. And aliases do that for us. They are shortcuts that help us execute uh, more complicated commands that help us get the job done, which is really what PowerShell is all about, just trying to get things executed as a network administrator. Um, as we go through, what I want to do is make sure that we're comfortable with finding a list of aliases. We're going to use the get alias command with a few parameters to figure out how we can retrieve, filter different aliases to make sure we understand what they do, where they work. And if they don't exist, if we're missing something or we want to build our own, we're going to learn how to create and manage our own aliases in PowerShell as well using the new alias command and a few options there. Um, we're also going to, while we're doing this, take a look at something we call the session-based nature of PowerShell. I'm going to show you some of the way PowerShell acts and behaves using alias as an example. It's this session-based functionality that, that uh, we want to be comfortable with knowing as we do that. And as we're going through, we may as well revisit and make sure we're absolutely crystal clear on the difference between commandlets aliases, functions, workflows, and that uh, generic word that I use all the time called commands, which will help us get this job done. Now, as we uh, carry in, I'm going to load up my PowerShell ISE running as an administrator, of course. Now, you've I'm on record of saying be careful with shortcuts, be careful with aliases. And I'm going to reiterate that. They, I, I'm not against them. I use them myself. You've seen me use them. However, I try to use them carefully, and especially while I'm learning or when I'm scripting, I try to avoid them. It's I t personally, I think it's bad practice. I want to make sure that when I do a command that I'm asking you to interpret, I want it to be as crystal clear as possible. That means that my best practice is to adopt that full syntax, um, expanded version of the of the, uh, of the commandlet. PowerShell to me is so easy to work with. It does not require a tremendous amount of dexterity to type. I have tab complete. I have IntelliSense. I can work with the mouse. There's really no excuse to me for taking shortcut after shortcut after shortcut and making my life more difficult or somebody else's more difficult if we're trying to share scripts. Um, I will promise you that you're going to build a script and if you start putting shortcuts in or aliases or truncations, you're going to look at it a year later and you're going to have to try to un you have to decipher what you've done and it just makes your makes your life so much harder so while aliases have a place in the world i want you to be careful with them and again adopt them when you get more comfortable and um lecture over let's start by figuring out what aliases we have to work with well we know an alias is a shortcut and we know that the get alias command gives me a list of all the aliases. I can browse through these alphabetically and I can start seeing that there are aliases for almost all of the ones that, that I've been working with so far. Look at that, even get alias has its own. G-A-L is the alias for get alias. No problem. So as I start working with things, I can get more comfortable with using these. But again, what I'm doing is I'm manually browsing the list. How, what if I want to find an alias for a specific command? Well, I'm going to use a parameter. So if I use my get alias command and I just simply start using the dash, you're going to see all the parameters that I have available to me. And let's start with the, um, let's start with the definition. Maybe I want to figure out the alias is available for something like, oh, I don't know, get child item. Okay, so get child item in PowerShell language is the thing that lists the contents of a directory or the current directory that I'm in. And if I do that, from an alias point of view, I can see that I have one, two, three preset aliases, DIR, GCI, and LS. Again, these are here to help other people or other people who come in from other languages, DIR, um, LS. These are comfortable. These are, are, are uh, commands you can use in other languages to do the same thing. So PowerShell comes preset with a lot of the ones that we might use in PowerShell and get the job done. Um, what if I'm looking for an alias, like say WJB, I can see that. If, if, if somebody typed WJB, it may not be immediately apparent to what that is, but I can use the get alias command again with a different parameter. I can use 
the name parameter, and I can type in WJB, and I can find that, oh, that alias happens to be the shortcut for weight job. And then if I wanted to find out what that was, I can use my help function to learn about that particular commandlet. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is use some of the parameters associated with get alias to help me figure out what those are. Now, not all aliases cover all things, right? Maybe I want something special, or maybe there's some a commandlet that I want to use that makes more sense to me. Let's use this uh, get child item as an example. Um, maybe I want to build my own alias. I'm going to use CLS. Interesting. Let's prove something. I'm going to use CLS. I know what that does. Let's use get alias with the name and figure out what CLS is. CLS is the alias for clear host, which is the commandlet that I run to clear the contents of my screen. Um, I'm going to I'm going to create a new alias now. What I want to do is, is let's say that the, the alias is for get child item or list or ls or I'm not happy with them. I want to build my own alias that makes sense to me. Well, I'm going to build, I'm going to use the new alias command and I can build my own uh, shortcuts. So let's start off by looking at the parameters. I could do a help on get a on new alias and I could learn about the parameters, but the, the, the dash really with IntelliSense is a great way to start just sort of figuring your way through of a commandlet. So obviously the first one that comes up is name. That feels really important. Um, the name of the alias. This is what I want to type. I want to, I'm going to create a f um, an alias called files. And what I want files to do, the value of that, I want that to be get child item. That's what I want it to do. So when I type the word files, I want that to be my shortcut for get child item. I'm going to hit the enter key again. PowerShell just accepts the command. I hope that worked because it didn't give me any error, but the way I can prove it is by typing the word files and see that it now actually is get child item. Moreover, I can actually, I can get out of that with a control C. I'm going to get alias and look carefully now. Can actually see that lo and behold I now have uh, there it is there's my files that's what I did I built that one wicked now cool I've customized my environment a little bit I've made my life a little easier if I wanted to I could use files and guess what I could use different parameters that match the alien or the commandlet that I'm working with so for example if I type in get child item and I do that, look at those parameters, path, literal path, filter, include, etc. cetera. Um, those are the parameters associated with get child item. That let me filter what I'm after. But because I built an alias, I do this, I have the same parameters available that I did in the actual commandlet. Perfect, fantastic. I can now work with that in the same way I would, I would want to before. Here's the caveat. PowerShell is something called session-based. So it creates a session, it creates a world for you. The moment I close PowerShell, however, that session is gone, it's history. It, it's like it never happened. Every time I open a PowerShell from here, it's a fresh new world, it's a brand new day. And if I want to do a quick look for the word files, I get in there. But I created that alias. Well, I created the alias in the other session. That session is gone. This is a fresh session, a different session. That alias that I built is no longer there. Well, fortunately, PowerShell will help us figure out how to deal with that. If I want to use that alias over and over again, I want to start defining my world. And in a video to come, we're going to start building a, a pre-script. We're going to build something called a profile script that will actually preset PowerShell to the parameters in the environment that you want. One of those things could often be bringing in aliases that you want. And I could use my import and export command. Well, let's build an alias again. I'm gonna build that alias one more time. I'm gonna call it name files, and then the value of that alias will be get child item. Oopsie, I got an S in there, child item. Notice everybody, I'll just, we'll just sideline here. I really rely on IntelliSense. IntelliSense is that clarification that PowerShell is with me. If I'm doing something um, and, and IntelliSense isn't with me, I have to slow down and make sure that I'm actually doing it right. 
it's not wrong sometimes that you can actually have IntelliSense not help you. Sometimes it'll still work, but if you find IntelliSense isn't predicting with you, it's often a case that your commandlet's not gonna work. So, but I'm going to add my new alias. I'm gonna check it, it does work. That's cool. Okay, well, now what I'm gonna do here is let's save. Let's say I make 10 of these. And I've got a whole bunch of aliases and I'm super cool with them and I'm getting really comfortable with PowerShell using my aliases. I want to export them to a place where I can have PowerShell import them every single time I load a shell session. And um, if I do a quick check, if I wanna learn about some of the tools that I've got, let's do a quick check on our Command add-on, look at the look at what I've got here. I've got set alias, new alias, import, get, and export. Well, I know what get alias does. I know what new alias does. If I looked at the help for set alias, you'd find that set alias is a way to overwrite another alias. Um, and export and import do exactly what they suggest. So let's play with a couple of those. I'm going to, let's export my list of aliases. And let's see if we can hammer through the um, through the uh, parameters here. Again, the dash, IntelliSense, super helpful. Well, there's two options here. There's a path and a literal path. And you want to, uh, the help would actually tell me the subtle difference between the two. But um, I'm gonna trust path and I'm gonna export this file to a particular spot. Now, again, IntelliSense, super helpful. I started with the C drive, followed by a colon and a backslash, and PowerShell is with me, and it says, cool, I'm navigating the file system with you. Um, I wanna go to the users directory. My computer user is my college ID, 3001061497, don't sell that on, in on internet, please. I'm going to hit the slash, and as you can see, I'm just navigating the Windows file system here. I'm gonna go to my desktop, and I'm gonna create a file file called um, alias aliases.txt. That's what I've got. Cool. And so what I'm going to do here is hit enter. And well, maybe I'll do a verbose here just to make see if it watch this works. Cool. So I added a switch parameter called verbose. The operation appears to have been successful. If I minimize, oh, there we go. I've got an alias text. Let's open this up. There's all my aliases. Brilliant. Now those are the current ones that came with the default. And inside here, undoubtedly, I'm going to find, there's my files right there. Okay, that's the one that I built, brilliant. Okay, now I'm going to go back to PowerShell. And I know that my files alias works. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close the session. And just like last time, I'm gonna find that that alias is gonna disappear. So when I go to run my cool alias, it's gonna fail, but I've saved all my aliases in this cool file. Let's import that list of aliases. Again, I'm gonna grab it from the path that happens to be on my C drive, in my users folder, on my desktop called aliases. There we go. And if I do this, Watch what happens. Now, two things are gonna happen here, and I want you to pay I'm, I'm purposely gonna create a create some drama here. So I'm gonna hit enter, and ah, red, red, stop. Danger, Will Robinson. All sorts of cool things are going wrong here. I'm seeing errors where I cannot create aliases where something already exists. So what happened? Did my command fail? Well, yes and no. Remember that that text file had all the aliases that PowerShell knew. When I opened up the, sh the new session, it already had those aliases in. And so I can see clearly that I cannot import and overwrite an alias where one already exists. It won't let me. However, it will let me if it doesn't exist. So what it didn't tell me is that it did in this list create the alias for files because that one didn't exist before. So it said, I can't do all of these other ones because they're already there, but somewhere in here where it didn't tell me, it was able to create the files. It should have been. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go get alias and let's just simply stroll through. 
it was under the F's. There it is. Okay, so yes, that actually worked. So it let me have my files, but it puked back all the problems with the others because I tried to overwrite them. Well, I wonder if there's a way I can handle this. I could get more creative. I could go and manipulate the text file. So option one is I could go to this text file and you see that it's simply a, it's, it's a CSV organized document. So I could really just get rid of anything that I don't want. I can make this only my own PowerShell uh, aliases. That would solve the problem the next time I go to import stuff. Another way to do this, I'll show you another cool switch parameter um, under the common parameters. Now re remember all of these, well, it's just sort of shortcut here. If I go help get alias and you're going to see this on, on virtually every single command that you've got is they all end in these things called common parameters. Well, what are the common parameters? They are common with every single um, uh, commandlet. If I wanted to learn about those parameters, I could go help about common parameters. Look at that. There's, a, there's an about topic on that, which I could read about. And if I scroll up here, I'm going to see that there's a whole bunch of them. Some of them we've seen already. Scroll, 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 scroll. There they are. Look at this. I have a series of common ones that are both, um, so these are my common ones. And then I have these risk mitigation parameters. Oh, we saw what if and confirm in a previous video. We've seen verbose before. There it is. Um, there's a whole bunch of other ones. Like look at error action, error variable, information variable, out variable. And look at, they all have aliases themselves if we wanted to, if we wanted to do that. So there's aliases for the common parameters if we wanted to build those into our scripts. But um, let's look at the, what we can use is this error action one to tell us how to handle the error. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to, um, uh, let's, let's, let's close the shell again and let's open it up again. And now I know that, that those aliases, the ones that I created are gone and PowerShell has the regular ones. Now, but if I import these aliases from my C drive, uh, users 300 desktop slash alias, oopsie, there we go. If I do that, I know I'm gonna get the one I want, but I'm not gonna get a whole whack of errors too, but I understand the errors, I know what's happening. Well, I could use a few of these things. What, what's going to happen if there's an error? Okay. So if I go through and take a look at the, the, the help document on these parameters, one of the things I have an option with is actually saying, you know, what, if you get an error, ignore it because I'm expecting it. Just carry on. Let's see if that actually changes the world here. I'm going to hit enter and no errors. Brilliant. All those errors that I understood and knew what was happening, I suppressed them and I told them just to, I told PowerShell just to carry on, just continue with it. I might use this one in scripts to come because if I'm building scripts, I don't necessarily want to have a whole bunch of gobbledygook on the screen. But the question that I really need to know is, did my files alias come in? And if I do that, I can scroll through. I should be using my parameters here. I'm sorry, I'm just going through, but look at that. There is my files. Brilliant. So I now have created my own aliases. I've exported them. I've imported them. I've now seen cool little switch tricks that I can help to manage some errors. But one thing that I want to point out here is the subtle difference between some of these, um, some of these terms. Okay, now we're talking with an alias here. These are properly defined as aliases. I can see them. They're listed as an alias. One that one thing that's notably missing. Okay, let's um, let's do a look for let's do a look for uh, get alias, and I want to look for the definition of help. Okay, there's an alias for help called man. Awesome. Okay, man, short for manual, and that is a uh, Linux and Unix command. And so if I type man for something like get alias, 
Okay, I'm going to get the help document, just like I would if I typed help, get that document. But notice, if I type in get alias, there is no help. If I go alphabetically, I can see that history hi. There's no help here. There is no help alias. Well, that's because help is properly defined as a function. Okay, let's get some, some terms out of the way. A command. That's a term that we use generically. Anything that I execute, be it a commandlet or a function or anything, we're kind of routinely and trained to call it a command. In PowerShell terms, anything that follows this verb noun syntax, get variable, get item property valuable, import alias, that verb noun syntax is properly called a commandlet. And that is the unique term that defines the PowerShell language. Aliases are shortcuts for commandlets, but we have another missing factor here. Help is not here. Well, help is properly called a function. And if I wanted to get a list of all my functions, I can't, there is no get function. There, there could be a get funky if we were dancing, but there's no get function command. There, like I can see IntelliSense isn't helping me. So if I wanted to start looking for this, I'm quickly, I'm quickly running out of options. PowerShell says, no, I don't know what you're talking about, right? And I can verify that still again if I went to my command add-on and do a search for the word function. Yeah, nothing, nothing. Well, functions are types of commands. They're, 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 they're preset that execute multiple things, okay? And if I do a look for get, my get command, and I just hit enter, look at all those functions coming up. So functions are commands. Commandlets are commands. A command includes anything that I want to execute. Commandlets, functions, aliases, etc. A commandlet is in its own type of command and a function is its own type of command. And if I were to want to narrow this down on, not by name, but by command type, and I want to look at functions, right? I'm going to get a list of the functions. Now look, some of these commandlets, like show net firewall rule, or uh, start MP scan, set volume, these are functions. So although they follow the format of the verb noun syntax, they are technically functions because they do something a bit different. And if we go up here, oh, there's lots here. Let's 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 add another parameter here, so I don't have to scroll. I'm going to add the name again because of the because of the naming convention of my parameters. I can put them in any order. Let's look for something called help. There is a function for help. Help is a function. So every time I type help, I'm not actually doing the shortcut for get help. I'm actually doing a function, and that function is actually looks like this. Um, there is a there is a more command. Um, if you scroll through, you will find uh, that. Um, sorry, it's not an alias. What am I doing? I'm losing my mind. It, it is a page stopper. Now, in uh, in the ISE, it does not work. If I step get help, and I want to say get process dash full, I'm gonna see this whole thing and look at how it scrolls past. And you've watched me in enough videos scroll back up that is probably painful you to, for you to watch. The more command slows things down so I can actually take a look at the information. But here's the kicker, is that it doesn't actually work in the ISE. The ISE just is, is, is orchestrated differently. If I type in get help and I type in for the parameter of get process um, dash full, and I pipe that to the more command, which is supposed to slow things down. It didn't do anything. It just flies. Well, here's where it does work. I'm gonna close this up. I'll pop over to the uh, CLI environment. Okay, and so this is the original uh, original iteration. And if I type in get help for get process, okay, scroll city. There we go, the whole thing. Let's let's add some more scroll, scroll to it by adding the full. Okay, scroll, 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 scroll. 
Okay, however, if I were to break that and I were to change help, get help to help, get process dash full, okay, notice how it is stopping. You see the more down in the bottom corner there? There it is. This more is actually letting me space bar through the information. So it's a holdover from a previous version of PowerShell that is intended to slow the stuff down in your CLI environment. But the ISC doesn't, uh, it doesn't work that way. But what I was trying to show you is that the example is that help is not an alias. It's actually a function that is a combination of the word get help, the command like get help, piped to the more command. And so we're gonna look at piping in the video to come actually, because that's actually our next video. That's where we're going next is, is, is what the heck, what the heck is this uh, pipe thing doing? How am I sending information over? Well, this pipe command is our very next topic. But now hopefully you are a bit more comfortable with a couple of these functionalities here. Okay, so basically what we did in this video guys is we looked at aliases. We figured out how to find them. Okay, and like I said, Use them as you see fit. My personal best practice in this class is to ensure that you're, I'm using the full syntax form. However, uh, often I'll need to figure out what an, if there's an alias for something, or if I see an alias that I don't know what it is, I can use the definition to figure, I can use the definition parameter to figure that out. If there's something that I want to build for myself, I now can use the new alias command to build my own. And we saw how we can import and export because we now see that PowerShell is this special thing called session based. And we'll be exploring that in videos to come too. But the moment that window closes and it opens up again, it's like a fresh new session and everything that you did in that previous window is gone. However, um, along the way, we took a good look at the difference between commandlets, aliases, functions, and workflows. And our, uh, all of these are, are typically are, are considered commands. Oh, I didn't cover workflows, sorry. A workflow is simply a collection of functions, a, a, a very specific set of functions. And so we'll look at that in, in uh, when we start scripting uh, very, very shortly. Hopefully that helped everybody um, carry on. We will see you in the next video.